A very good evening aspirants, I welcome you all to the Hindu daily news analysis brought to you by Shankar AS Academy. Now before getting into news article discussion, I have an important announcement for you. The announcement is regarding prelims test series. Shankar AS Academy is going to start pre-stroming batch 1 for UPSC prelims 2024. The orientation for the first test will be conducted on 11th September 2023 and the first test will be on 18th September. A total of 48 tests including CSAT and mock tests will be provided in the test series. So register to the test series immediately and boost your prelim score. With this announcement let us get into news analysis. Today I am going to cover important news articles from the Hindu newspaper dated 6th of September 2023. Displayed here is a list of news articles that we will be discussing today. You can go through it. At the end of the video, we will also have prelims practice question discussions. So try to watch the entire video. And a kind request to you all, those who haven't yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Do subscribe and hit the bell icon button so that you will get regular notifications about our current affairs videos. Now let us get into our first news article discussion. Look at this news article. The news article says that the Tamil Nadu Health Minister has demanded funding from the central government under the National Ayush Mission. The minister noted that the funding would help the Tamil Nadu government to promote Ayush medical systems across the state. Okay, this is all about the news. Now in this context, let us learn few points about the National Ayush Mission. The National Ayush Mission was launched in 2014. It is a flagship scheme under the Ministry of Ayush. Note that the National Ayush Mission is a centrally sponsored scheme. This means that the funds for the scheme are shared between center and the states. Okay. Now coming to the objectives of National Ayush Mission. The main objective of this mission is to promote Ayush medical systems. Here Ayush stands for Ayurveda, Yoga and Naturopathy, Unani, Siddha and Homeopathy. See these are the six main Indian systems of medicine. They are practiced in India and in some of the neighboring Asian countries. So, the National Ayush Mission aims to promote these six Indian systems of medicine. Apart from this, the mission also aims to increase the availability and accessibility of Ayush healthcare services across the country. And this is done through establishing a network of Ayush health wellness centers. Okay. Now, talking about the components of National Ayush Mission, see the National Ayush Mission has four main components. The first component aims to ensure the availability of cost effective and affordable eye services to the people of India. The second component aims to strengthen Ayush educational systems and to create a quality Ayush workforce. And this is done by upgrading Ayush educational institutions. The third component aims to impose quality control of Ayurveda, Siddha, Unani and homeopathy drugs. And it also aims to increase the reliability of Ayush practitioners. This is done by upgrading the state government Ayush pharmacies, drug testing laboratories and Ayush enforcement mechanisms. Okay. And the final component aims to ensure the sustainable availability of Ayurveda, Siddha, Unani and homeopathy raw materials. This is done by adopting good agricultural practices. As most of the Ayush drugs are manufactured using agri products, the good agricultural practices will help to ensure sustainable availability of raw materials okay so these are the four components under the national ayush mission by working on these four components the ministry of ayush aims to promote the ayush medical system in our country okay now having seen the important points about national ayush mission now let us see a few points about ayush health and wellness centers ayush health and wellness centers would be operationalized under the broad umbrella of national ayush mission the centers are operated in a mode of centrally sponsored scheme. That is, the Ayush Health and Wellness Centers are funded by both the center and the states. See, through the Ayush Health and Wellness Centers, the government aims to achieve three things. Firstly, the government aims to reduce disease burden and to ensure holistic well-being through the centers. Secondly, the government aims to reduce out-of-pocket expenditure through Ayush Health and Wellness Centers. And finally, through the centers, the government aims to provide an alternative treatment options for the Indian citizens. Okay. These are all the objectives that the government aims to achieve through Ayush Health and Wellness Centers. And note that by 2024, the Ministry of Ayush aims to operationalize over 12,500 Ayush Health and Wellness Centers all over the country. Okay. 
and that's all regarding this discussion in this discussion we saw some points about national ayush mission then about the objectives of national ayush mission then we saw about the components of national ayush mission and finally we saw some points about ayush health and wellness centers since this topic is very much important for your prelims exam so revise all the facts that we discussed now with these points in mind let us move on to the next news article discussion look at this editorial article recently a petition was filed by a person in the kerala high court regarding encroachments in the hill stations of munnar see munnar is located in the idukki district of kerala in responding to a petition the district collector of idukki mentioned to the kerala high court that 326 land encroachments have been identified in munnar the petitioner also requested the appointment of a special officer to act against encroachments so the kerala high court asked the views of state government regarding this appointment apart from this the kerala high court also asked the views of union government regarding the assessment of carrying capacity of southern hill stations see last month a supreme court bench headed by chief justice of india suggested to constitute an export committee to conduct a complete and comprehensive study on the carrying capacity of the himalayan region following this the central government has proposed setting up a 13 member technical committee to study the carrying capacity of himalayan region now coming back to the case in kerala high court see the kerala high court asked whether the expertise of technical committee that has been proposed by central government that can be used to assess the carrying capacity of hill stations of kerala okay this is about the news article now in this discussion we will see what is carrying capacity and the impacts of exceeding the carrying capacity now let us start with carrying capacity see carrying capacity is a concept that is mainly used in environmental science it is mainly used to understand the relationship between the population of an organism and the resource available in the habitat such organism occupies carrying capacity refers to the maximum population size that an environment or ecosystem can suitably support over a specific period of time so basically carrying capacity refers to the number of people animals or crops which a region can support without environmental degradation the carrying capacity depends on various factors including the availability of food water shelter and other resources and it also depends on environmental conditions such as climate and the ability of ecosystem to absorb waste and maintain its stability for example the carrying capacity of alluvial plains of uttar pradesh is higher than the carrying capacity of siberian tundra okay now having seen what is carrying capacity and the factors influencing carrying capacity now let us see the impacts of exceeding the carrying capacity the first impact is resource depletion see if the population exceeds the carrying capacity for a longer period of time the resources may be depleted that is resources like food water and shelter will become scarce this lead to increased competition among individuals for access to these resources which potentially cause stress malnutrition and even death due to resource shortage for example let us take lake chad see lake chad is located in central africa it is a prime example of a region where the carrying capacity has been exceeded see the chad lake has historically been a vital source of water for millions of people in chad cameroon nigeria niger however due to combination of factors including population growth over extraction of water for irrigation deforestation and prolonged droughts the water level of lake chad has significantly decreased over the decades this has affected the resource availability around the lake chad this has affected the resource availability due to reduced resource availability various nations are fighting over the leftover resources so resource depletion is one of the main impact of exceeding the carrying capacity then the next impact of exceeding the carrying capacity is habitat degradation see when the carrying capacity is exceeded the available resources it will be depleted at a rapid pace this can reduce the overall health and diversity of the ecosystem for example let us take mount everest see mount everest has faced problems related to overcrowding and overuse by climbers so large number of climbers during the climbing season have led to trash build up safety concerns and environmental degradation okay so habitat degradation is the another impact of exceeding the carrying capacity then the next impact is spread of disease see in some cases exceeding carrying capacity has also led to the spread of diseases for example let us take bats 
See during hibernation the bats seek shelter in caves and mines which forms large colonies. When the number of bats in a hibernation exceeds the carrying capacity of the caves it becomes overcrowded. This results in the easy transmission of fungus called the white nose syndrome fungus. See white nose syndrome is a fungal disease that affects hibernating bats particularly in North America. So spread of disease is also one of the impact of exceeding carrying capacity. And lastly exceeding carrying capacity can sometimes lead to population crash. Here population crash is a sudden sharp reduction in the size of population. For example let us take Easter Island. This island is located in the South Pacific. Historically Easter Island was inhabited by a Polynesian population. They relied on islands limited natural resources for their livelihoods including forests for timber, agriculture for food and fishing for sustenance. As the population grew the demands for resources increased which led to deforestation, soil erosion and depletion of fish stocks. Due to this the carrying capacity of the island was exceeded. This resulted in food shortages, warfare and social unrest. Due to this the population of Easter Island faced a very sharp decline. So this is an example of how exceeding carrying capacity can lead to population crash. And that's all regarding this discussion. In this discussion we saw what is carrying capacity and then the impacts of exceeding carrying capacity. Now with these points in mind let us move on to the next news article discussion. Look at this article from the text and context page. This article discusses about the Forest Conservation Amendment Act 2023. The article also further discusses about the implications of Amendment Act on northeastern states like Mizoram and Nagaland. See this topic appeared in the news because recently the Mizoram State Assembly passed a resolution against the Forest Conservation Amendment Act 2023. So in this discussion we will see why northeastern states are opposing the Amendment Act and what are all the important issues associated with Amendment Act 2023. Okay. Now first let us see some basics about the Forest Conservation Amendment Act 2023. See the main objective of this Amendment Act is to achieve India's goal of net zero emissions by 2070. So in order to achieve this goal the Amendment Act promises to create a carbon sink then to increase forest cover and to improve the livelihoods of forest communities. Okay. These are all the main objectives of Forest Conservation Amendment Act 2023. But there are three important issues associated with Forest Conservation Amendment Act 2023. Now let us see the issues one by one. The first issue is that the 2023 Amendment Act introduces narrow definitions of forests. As per the Amendment Act, the definition of forests only include the forests that are notified in government records and it does not include other forest regions. So this change in definition could potentially impact around 28 percentage of India's forest cover. This is because many forest lands in India are just fruit orchards and plantations and they were not usually recorded as forests in government records. See these forests can be impacted due to narrowing down of definition of forests. Okay. For example let us imagine there is a forest land in Nagaland which is not recorded as forest by the government. But this forest has been protected by indigenous tribes for centuries. However as per the new amendment act government is free to allow the destruction of these forests for construction and development. So this is the first problem. Then the second issue is that the forest conservation amendment act 2023 allows for strategic infrastructure development within 100 km of international borders without getting any forest clearances. This means that the forests within 100 km of international borders can be cleared for developmental projects without any checks and balances. So this is a concern for states like Mizoram because most of their forest land falls within 100 km of international borders. This is the second issue. Thirdly the Forest Conservation Amendment Act 2023 allows the construction of zoos, safari parks and ecotourism facilities in forest land without getting any forest clearances from the government. So these are the important issues with Forest Conservation Amendment Act 2023. Now moving on to see why northeastern states are opposing the Forest Conservation Amendment Act 2023. See Mizoram and Nagaland have opposed this act because the act allows the diversion of forest lands near international borders for developmental projects. 
know that Nagaland and Mizoram have special constitutional provisions under Article 371A and 371G respectively. These provisions prevent the parliament from imposing laws that affect the traditional customs, land ownership and resources of Mizoram and Nagaland. In simple words, the state governments of Mizoram and Nagaland have the power to decide whether any parliamentary law should be enforced in their states or not. So based on these constitutional provisions, recently the Mizoram State Assembly passed a resolution against Forest Conservation Amendment Act 2023. In addition to this, the Nagaland Assembly also decided to pass a resolution against the Act. See the states like Tripura and Sikkim have already opposed 100 km exemption clause in the Amendment Act. Okay. Now coming to the problem with recorded forest area, see the recorded forest area comprises both notified and unclassed forests, which means that forest land that are not officially classified as forests are also part of recorded forest areas. And note that more than half of the geographical area of northeastern area comes under recorded forest area. But the new amendment only considers the forest area that are recorded by the government. So this lead to an exploitation of most of the forest cover in the northeastern region. Okay. From these points we can understand why the northeastern states are opposing the Forest Conservation Amendment Act 2023. So the author concludes the article by suggesting some ways to strengthen forest protection. Firstly the author says that the government should ensure the consent of Gram Shabha before diverting any forest land. Secondly. The author suggests that the Ministry of Tribal Affairs should play a role in recognizing and settling forest rights. In addition to this, the Ministry should legally enforce the provisions of Forest Rights Act 2006 in northeastern states to protect the forest rights of tribal communities. Okay, These are all some of the solutions suggested by the author. That's all regarding this discussion. In this discussion we saw about the issues associated with Forest Conservation Amendment Act 2023 and we saw about why the northeastern states are opposing the amendment act now with these points in mind let us move on to the next news article discussion look at this news article according to the news article the bas that is the bureau of indian standards has made the isi mark mandatory for certain products the products include reusable water bottles and utensils made of various materials like copper stainless steel and aluminium the BAS has made the ISI mark mandatory to ensure the quality of these products. Okay, this is all about the news article. Now in this context, let us learn some points about ISI mark. See, you might have noticed this image in various products. This is the ISI mark. Here ISI stands for Indian Standards Institute. The ISI was formed post-independence to ensure standard of products in India. The ISI was renamed as Bureau of Indian Standards in 1986. Currently, the ISI mark is issued by the Bureau of Indian Standards. It is issued mainly for industrial products. Okay. The ISI mark certifies that a product conforms to the Indian standards. See in the image here, it is mentioned as IS8034. So if any product has this mark, then the particular product conforms to the 8034 standards. Okay. Now is the ISI mark mandatory? Basically, the ISI certification program is voluntary in nature. See if any manufacturer who feels confident enough that his product has the ability to meet BAS standards, then he can apply for product certification. Although the scheme itself is voluntary in nature, the government of India on considerations of public health and safety, it has enforced compulsory certification on various products through orders issued from time to time under various acts. This means that the government of India can make certification mandatory for certain products. Till now 211 product standards have been made mandatory considering public health and safety and others have been made voluntary. So for those 211 mandatory products consumers shouldn't buy it if it does not have the ISI mark. For example the food related products should have ISI marks. See you can take any packaged drinking water and check whether it has IS14543 marking or not. If the packaged drinking water does not have this marking, it is not safer to consume. Okay. Also note that to prevent the ISI mark holders from slipping away from the standards, the BAS can make surprise visits to the factories to inspect quality of the product. Apart from this, 
the bas can also pull a product from the market and it can inspect its quality okay in addition to this to ensure the quality of products the bas can prosecute manufacturers for misusing the isa mark that is the bas can prosecute manufacturers if they use isa mark in their product without getting the actual certification from the bas okay see people can also make complaints to the bas regarding the misuse of isa mark now if there is any punishment to those who are misusing the isa mark See misuse of the ISA mark is punishable with imprisonment of up to two years or a fine of minimum rupees two lakh has been imposed on the offenders, or both the punishment and fine also imposed. See these penal provisions are provided in BAS Act 2016. Okay, and that's all regarding this discussion. In this discussion we saw various aspects of ISA mark. Now with these points in mind, let us move on to the next news article discussion. Look at this news article. Yesterday, the Karnataka High Court has permitted Kannada actor Ganesh to go ahead with the construction of a farmhouse on his land that falls under the eco-sensitive zone of the Bandipur Tiger Reserve. This is about the news article. Now, in this discussion, let us see some points about Bandipur Tiger Reserve. The Bandipur Tiger Reserve was formed in 1973. The Tiger Reserve is spread across the two remaining districts of southern Karnataka, namely the Mysuru and Chamraja Nagar districts more importantly the tiger reserve is located at the tri junction area of the states of Karnataka Tamil Nadu and Kerala and note that the Bandipur tiger reserve forms part of the Nilgiri biosphere reserve also it is a part of the western ghats tiger landscape that consists of mudumalai tiger reserve nagarhol tiger reserve and the wayanad wildlife sanctuary okay this is a basic information about bandipur tiger reserve Now talking about the flora and fauna of Bandipur Tiger Reserve, see the most famous resident of Bandipur Tiger Reserve is tiger. The tiger reserve also houses the endangered Asiatic wild elephant. Apart from this, some species like sloth bears, gorse, Indian rock pythons, jackals, muggers, four-horned antelopes, sambar, mouse deer, chital, sloth bear, and the rare flying lizard are also spotted in the Bandipur Tiger Reserve. and note that the bandipur tiger reserve also has over 200 species of birds okay this all about the fauna now talking about flora see the bandipur tiger reserve supports a wide range of flora the trees like teak rosewood sandalwood indian laurel indian kino tree etc are found in the bandipur tiger reserve now talking about the rivers that flows through bandipur tiger reserve see the prominent rivers that flows through the tiger reserve are the moya river and the nuvhol river okay and that's all regarding this discussion in this discussion we saw about the various aspects of bandipur tiger reserve now with these points in mind let us move on to the next part of the video that is to discuss preliminary practice questions as friends today we are having three practice questions i will solve two of them and one will be a quiz question for you look at the first question here four factors are given we have to find how many of the factors influence the carrying capacity of a region see carrying capacity refers to the maximum population size that an environment or ecosystem can sustainably support over a specific period of time now coming to the question climate vegetation water resource inter and intra species competition see all these factors influence the carrying capacity of a region so the correct answer for the question is option d all four moving on let's take up the second question This question is regarding a scheme named Ayush Ausadi Gunvatta Evam Utpadan Samvardhan Yojana. Now look at the first statement. It is implemented by the Ministry of Ayush. See this statement is correct. This particular scheme is implemented by the Ministry of Ayush. Now coming to the second statement, it is a centrally sponsored scheme. See this statement is incorrect. This scheme is a central sector scheme. That is, the scheme is fully funded by the central government, and it is not a centrally sponsored scheme. So, second statement is incorrect. Now, coming to the third statement, through this, the ministry aims to enhance India's manufacturing capabilities and exports of traditional medicines and health promotion products. See, this statement is correct. It is the main aim of the scheme. Through this scheme, the Ministry of Ayush aims to enhance manufacturing and export. capabilities of traditional medicines and health products okay since only two statements are correct the correct answer for the question is option b only two this is a quiz question for you today i will post this quiz question in a community section try to answer it 
and the answer for the course question will be provided in the comment section itself. You can verify the answers and displayed here is a mains question for your practice. Go through the question, write your answer and post it in the comment section. With this we have come to the end of the video. If you found our video to be useful, do like, comment and share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe Shankar IS Academy YouTube channel. Thank you for listening.